hi everyone. Um, thanks for being here. Um, my name is Ivy Islam, for those who don't know me, and I'm part of the implementation team here at Solvexia. And I'll be introducing you to uh, one of our case studies of non-blockchain smart contracts. Um, so the agenda for today, um, I'm going to start by talking to you a bit about the differences between smarter contracts and and um, blockchain smart contracts, just because smart contract has been coined by blockchain technology, um, I ought to give you guys some of the differences. Um, secondly, we will go through some of the current challenges that companies are facing regarding contract generation and management. Um, thirdly, I will go through some of the existing features in Solvexia that can make your contract smarter. And finally, we'll follow up, we'll wrap it up with a demo of generating a contract via Solvexia. So, blockchain versus Solvexia. Over the last couple of years, there has been a massive hype surrounding blockchain technology. A popular area in particular is for smart contracts as a means to address issues regarding contract generation and management. While blockchain is best used in forced digital scarcity, that is where every operation is immutably stored as a unique algorithm, um, at, this, at its current state, for this to be true, it needs to sacrifice in areas such as scalability and speed. And while managers tend to default to blockchain smart contract as the solution, they tend to consider some of our other alternatives such as automation to gain a more seamless experience when it comes to contract generation, approval, and management. With current technology, automation is a transparent, secure, and scalable solution to smart contracts that is quick to develop and quick to modify. So what are some of the challenges? Um, the key problems that everyone says that they want to address with blockchain smart contract includes reducing the time to create and review contracts, eliminate the need for key person dependency, and the need for human beings to check every single detail of contracts, particularly with standardized items. <coughs> Um, which you can all agree can become quite repetitive and susceptible to version control issues, human errors, and so on. We, want, we also want um, better tracking and analytics to understand where all of these contracts are coming from, where they are, and where they are going. Um, finally, the lack of overall traceability and transparency makes it vulnerable to downstream risk. We believe that automation using Solvexia can readily address these issues mentioned. Through these business profiles in mind, we concocted the idea of a smart contract, an automated legal documentation process built using many of Solvexia's existing features. Now I'm going to go over them in details, but just as a quick run through, we have auto population, checks, approval requests, tracking and analytics, and secured cloud-based storage. So firstly, we have auto-population, which allows for more standardization of the process. It leaves mundane, repetitive tasks away from staff and ensures a consistent and error-free draft. Then we have um, checks, which provides a simpler means and time-efficient way to condense the most important elements of your contract and to be checked checks, to be checked against standard terms. Um, for example, if your business is used to signing two-year term deal, but this new client insists on one-year contract, you can set the process so that this deviation is highlighted. Approval requests. This ensures that the right authority to have control over the process where their expertise is needed the most. Then we have tracking and analytics. Um, this provides a way to record the process from A to Z, from time of creation to response rate and version control history. The process can live in your database and can be viewed transparently. Here you can see, um, I have a hard time looking, but 
Here you can see an example of the dashboard which follows the contour generation process. Um, so at, on the second row, you can see who the client is to, to whom I'm creating the contract for, who my requester is. Um, then we have the approver who's going to approve this contract and how long it has taken for them to respond. We can also check the status for um, the process. So green means it has been approved, red means it has been declined, whereas the yellow one means that it's still waiting after Jamie. Here we also have an approver track which um, calculates the average response days of my approvers, uh, which is quite neat micromanagement tool. Um, it's there if you guys need it. <laughs> um, finally, we have cloud-based storage, secured cloud-based storage, which allows everything from contracts, content, to generation, usage, fees, and threshold to live in one centralized place. This information can then be utilized in other areas such as um, updates, reminders, and invoice generation. So, so far, um, we went through the current challenges that some companies face regarding contract generation and management. And we also talked about how existing features in Solvexia can be a solution to these challenges. But what does a contract in Solvexia look like? Well, today I created a process based on generating a deal between a Solvexian client and Solvexia. Now, if you think of any contract management process, not necessarily Solvexia, um, it will generally involve someone like a salesperson going out and making a deal with the client. All the t negotiated um, items will go into a certain contract template, and this contract will then process through different approval teams throughout the company. And if this contract satisfies all the requirements and the approval team is all right with it, they're going to approve it. And if not, they will decline it, and this process will loop back again and again until we finally have something that can be published. So, ooh. so ultimately, this will need to get published and approved, and someone perhaps will want to track this whole thing. So the demo I'm going to show you today is based on our own software license contract, but obviously the solution can be easily implemented to any contract management process. So for some of you are familiar with our subscriber view, um, through our view, we can design an interface where within a few simple click, you can generate a contract that is customized to your business template. Um, my first drop down lets me choose the requester, so essentially the person who requests the contract. And then we have an approver, um, the person who sees the validity, oversees the validity of the contract. The next few sections will let me choose and fill up information regarding the counterparty, the fees, and so on currency and such. And as soon as I click this button, the run this process button, my, co my process in the back end will fill up my templates with all these information that I inputted via uh, my subscriber view. And then once this draft is generated, it will be sent to my approver um, via email. My approver, my approver will then receive one of, well, two things. One of them is the draft, which has been auto-populated with the information from my subscriber view. If we open it up, yep, there you go. You will see that um, some of the variables have been updated with the information. Um, and I will scroll down. And here, my approver can decide to check the finer details in every page if they want to, but obviously that will take some time. So the second thing that my approver will be able to open is a summary of this contract generation. So if I quickly scroll down through to my fees page, put it on the side. Here is a summary of my contract generation. 
the purpose of this summary, zoom in, yeah, there you go. Um, the purpose of this summary is to fasten the approval process so that my approver can focus on the main highlights and deviation of this contract. One of the columns we added on the side is the variance from the standard deal. And as you can see, they're color-coded between the ones that are green, which do not vary too much from my standard deal, to the yellow ones, which could be some warning, and the red one, which are critical for my approver to approve. Uh, now, if they choose to accept, my process will turn this draft into a proper copy and email it back to the requester. However, if my approver decides to decline, a different email will be sent to my requester um, announcing that the contract has been declined. So, to conclude, we have seen the challenges that businesses face when it comes to traditional methods of contract generation and management. We have seen the existing features in Solvexia, which addresses these issues and enhances your experience. And finally, we have seen that Smarter Contracts offers a range of benefits from automatically generating, populating, and checking a contract to tracking approval processes and highlighting any deviation from standard terms.